Coming up on this episode of the Model 3 Owners Club show. It looks like Model 3 deliveries are actually on track. And NAFTA is in the news, so how does that play with the Model 3? Good. Are you worried about the Model 3 battery longevity? You shouldn't be. And we'll also tell you more about supercharger and updates with those. Yeah. Is it possible that we're going to see 1 billion electric vehicles in the near future? My bet. And we'll look at what the other manufacturers are doing in the EV space. Yeah. These stories and more, including mailbag, coming right up. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, well, here we are back in the studio after doing some field stuff. My name is Kenneth Bacor. And I'm Trevor Page. Thanks for joining us on the show. So, uh, boy, yeah. we had a busy weekend. We've had a busy couple of weeks, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I did an event last weekend, or two weeks ago, You and then you did an event last weekend at the same time I was Yeah, doing the one. National Drive Electric, Electric Week, Week is just finished yeah. uh, on Sunday, so we both attended different events in different locations. The barbecue, yeah. Yeah, the Tesla barbecue on the, on the weekend. Wow, it was yeah. a lot. I mean, if you look at the previous uh, uh, video that I That's did, right. uh, that we put up, you can get some pretty good information yeah. of what we did. So, anyhow. It was great to attend the event. So, one thing I wanted, I think we both wanted to do is just a shout out and thanks for all the feedback. Um, we're going, now that we're we're getting out of our houses more and more in, into the real world. <laughs> yeah. We we come across a lot of people. I don't know about you, but I get people walking up to me from time to time saying, hey, are you Ken from Model 3? And hey, you love the show. So we really appreciate all the feedback that we're getting and people coming up to say hi. If you do see any one of us, please come up and say hi. Um, so thanks for everybody to come out and great meeting you. I want to do a quick shout out to some of the folks that I met last weekend to, to Rob, Andrew, Leo, and uh, Angelica and Dan, I know you got a few folks you want to shout yeah, out to. Yeah, I just want to say well. hi to Eric and both uh, Ma uh, Eric and Massimo, who uh, who came out to the uh, Tesla event as well. So yeah, we had a really good turnout on both events on the weekend. So we appreciate all the viewers who come out and say hi. We're very personable people, so we appreciate seeing yeah. all the fans and talking to people. So Anyhow, we have some Model 3 news. We do. Let's get into let's it. Get so right deliveries, in. what's going on? Well, um, as most of us know who've been actually paying attention, uh, Tesla's been talking a lot about, uh, you know, their supposed production numbers of course uh, we saw at the delivery event that they deliver the, uh, the first 30 cars mm -hmm. and they had guided somewhere around 100 cars delivered sometime in august and over 1500 in september um, there's been some conflicting information out there because i think some people are still seeing uh, release candidate cars out there and yes. we've seen those vin numbers somewhere in the 300 or, or higher and i know that tesla's been keeping the lower vin numbers for employees so we know that, uh, you know, there are over 250 on the VIN numbers mm -hmm. for employees. Mm -hmm. So they are actually going out to employees, SpaceX employees and Tesla, of course, and, uh, you know, higher ups inside the company. So it's still early days. We don't know exactly big, uh, numbers that they're producing because it's one of the most popular questions we get all the time. Of course, now that we're getting towards the end of September, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. what's the production ramp looking like? And I want to caution everyone. You know, because Elon has said many times during the financial calls is that they have a production S curve mm -hmm. and they cannot predict when that S curve uh, will actually happen as far as the, you know, the big production ramp. So we have to be patient. We have to watch and see uh, what's what's going to happen over the next little while. But I think the big push is going to really come towards the end of October, early November, when the general public will actually start being able to configure and start taking deliveries of these cars. So uh that's what we have on the Model 3 news front as far as production is concerned. There are pictures coming out almost daily. Yeah. Uh, Tesla has a... I uh, that. Yeah, Tesla has that, a delivery... That Google site as well. It's just every day there's pictures yeah, popping up. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have a delivery uh, mm -hmm. center that's close to the factory in Fremont right. where they've been delivering, say, you know, six, seven, eight, nine cars at a time. And... Um, trucks you know, rolling out with them on yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. We have reports of lots of trucks coming in and out. But but don't forget, of course, they're also in the, in the midst of a third quarter push for S and X. Yeah. Uh, so they there's are. a lot of cars coming out of the factory right now because they want to deliver as many as they can so they can get some really good third quarter numbers. Like if you're getting calls year. or your emails about looking at SNX, now you know why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if yeah, you're yeah. older. If you want a referral code, That's I'll right. put one down in the link in the show there's description. Please help yourself to that. <clears throat> Absolutely. But they are being spotted. I mean, I, uh, there was one recently spotted in Europe. So now at least they're getting out there, I think, maybe for testing purposes or, yes. or to get around to the other stores for employees, right? They're doing that. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's one that's made its rounds around the U.S. or continuing to do that for employees to actually see the car and get a little bit of firsthand uh, look at it. Yep. So it's all good stuff. So it's happening. I think 
You're absolutely right, Trevor. We really won't get a, a definitive number until we, we hear the next quarterly call. In fact, probably the one afterwards, and then we'll get an idea of how they're trending. Because in those calls, those financials, they'll release delivery numbers, and we'll be able to gauge you know where they're at by the end of, I would say, by the second, uh, the uh, two quarters from now. Hopefully, it'll be tracking Yeah, the earliest well. will be sometime early October mm-hmm. at, yeah. after the, uh, the next financial call. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some actual physical numbers, but don't be yeah. surprised if they don't talk about it either. So, mm-hmm. who knows? We'll keep watching. We've got some questions uh, in the past about the Model 3 will be offered with the air suspension option that you can get today on the S and X's. And Elon confirmed recently through Twitter, which he likes to do, that smart air suspension will be available. Uh, but you're going to have to have the dual motor option to get that or the D version. A timing on that is about six to nine months, mid-2018. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, it doesn't surprise yeah. me that they would talk. He said it would be linked. Now, he didn't specify whether it's availability linked or linked and means that, you know, you have to get it as part of uh, of the dual motor. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at the Model S and the Model X, of course, uh, air suspension is included in all the cars now. And on the Model S, on the low end, the rear wheel drive car um, has been confirmed to be going away by the end of the year. So on the Model S and the X, they will all be all wheel drive, air suspensions included. So it doesn't surprise me that Tesla would tie the two together yeah. uh, eventually with the Model 3 when once dual motor mm-hmm. comes online that uh, air suspension would be included with the car. So yeah. again, the next question, of course, how much is going to cost? We have no idea. <laughs> so we could look at what it costs today for an S or an X and maybe extrapolate, extrapolate from a bit. there because but. obviously most of the options on the Model 3 are priced very similar to mm-hmm. the Model S and the Model mm-hmm. 3, so mm-hmm. or, or the Model uh, X, right. I should say. So yeah, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, you know, they're mm-hmm. in production hell right now and they will be for the next six months or so. So, um, but it's encouraging. For those who haven't experienced the air suspension, either in a Tesla or another vehicle, what are the benefits of that versus, I mean, for those who might be thinking of it? Well, I've watched a lot of videos and I've actually driven both cars Mm -hmm. and I actually be kind of hard pressed to really notice the difference in terms Mm -hmm. of ride quality, unless you really spend a lot of time in it. But the one thing that the air suspension does give you is geolocation raising and lowering. Mm, right. So if you have a questionable uh, driveway Steep like Ryan McCaffrey has, mm-hmm. yeah, that's <laughs> and I true. was in his car when we scraped the bottom Scrape, of it, yeah. I think that's because I was sitting in the front seat, yeah. but that's another story. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, being able to raise the suspension mm-hmm. when you come that's to true. curves or low bumps and stuff, that kind of thing is kind mm-hmm. of important. That's true. Uh, being able to lower it for better aerodynamics is, is kind of important. But other mm-hmm. than that, it's it's not for everybody. So Interesting. Well, we'll keep our eyes out. And when we see pricing and availability that's confirmed, we'll let you know. Yep. NAFTA, of course, is in the news uh, almost daily, especially here in Canada, because it's a big thing for us as we rely quite heavily on the the United States and Mexico as trading partners. And we do a lot of business across those borders. We've tried asking Elon multiple times, and and don't worry, we'll continue to tweet him. Uh, In fact, I'm probably overdue for sending a tweet, so maybe (laughs) I'll do that after the show, about if he can comment on the tariff going away on the Model 3. Um, As you know, the Model 3 is made up of about 10,000 unique parts, which is pretty good compared to the SNX, which have a lot more, my understanding. Yeah, and we got our first shot at the Monroni sticker, which is a legal document, by the way, Mm -hmm. um, that explains uh, the features and the options on the car. But most importantly on the Model 3 uh, Monroni sticker is we got the parts makeup, and it's 75% Mm -hmm. North American. Now, of course, what you're talking about with NAFTA, that's super important for us in Canada and for Mexico, Because the NAFTA agreement says that the car must have a 62.5% content to be exempt from the tariffs. As a minimum, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Model S and Model X are 55% uh, on account, really, of the the battery cells that are made in Japan. So Mm -hmm. with all the battery cells uh, being made, of course, outside of Reno, Nevada at the Gigafactory, that now, uh, you know, of course, and trying to source as many partners as they can in North America, that pushes the content up beyond, you know, the minimum threshold. So it's looking uh, really good that um, we may say uh, we may see savings of up to maybe twenty five hundred dollars mm-hmm. on a Model Three because of the six point one percent extra tariff that has to be paid for. Um, of course, if you're buying a Model S or a Model X, that tariff is included in the price. It's you don't see it. It's not a separate in, yeah. line item. Mm-hmm. It's not like tax but, or something. Exactly. So we're hoping that that gets passed on. Technicality mm-hmm. uh, aside, it should be passed along. Uh, Tesla's been pretty good about being transparent. I hope it comes through. When we get final numbers, so the you know we should get a definitive mm-hmm. answer to that. But in the meantime, we're still going to keep trying and asking. We're, we're going to keep trying. I realistically don't expect to get a response till well into next year until they're in a position to start 
forecasting Canadian deliveries. And then at that point, you know, they'll, they'll start announcing pricing, but we'll keep asking. But it's an important point if you're outside of the U.S. Yeah, I also want to make a point. Um, if uh, We have a lot of viewers, of course, from all around the world, yeah. and that's the most common question. What is the Model 3 going to cost you in local currency? Uh, I would caution everybody to look at the, the best way to calculate this is go look at a Model S of what it costs in your current current in, in your currency in your current country, mm -hmm. and uh, figure out what the exchange factor is, and just just drop that on the Model Three, and just you know, and that should Use give that. you a pretty close yeah. answer as, as to how uh, the uh, what the cost would be uh, what what the cost of the Model Three will be in your local currency. So try that exercise, and it should help you out. Yeah. Um, batteries. I mean, there's all this news coming out, and I know in some of these events that we've just participated in, and talking to people, um, they're concerned about gee, how long is the battery going to last? You know, it gets cold in Canada. We have all these issues. Well, there's a couple of great stories that have come out. One of them from Finland. There's a, a 2014 Model S 85 in Finland that's just surpassed more than 400,000 kilometers or that equates to 250,000 miles in just a couple of short years. And the reported um, battery capacity loss is only about 7%. Astounding. I find that pretty remarkable for that kind of mileage because I know I wouldn't put that kind of mileage on um, in a three in that short of time. So <laughs> what, you know, I, I mean, I tell people it's, you know, it's the combination of the engineering and, and design of the of Tesla and, and the batteries that, that they partner with Panasonic, but also the way that they deal with thermal management. Absolutely. And, and what else do, would you add to that to tell people that are new to this? It's a combination of chemistry. It's a combination mm -hmm. of, of the use case of the vehicle because you're charging it differently than the cell phone. Let's face it, most people's exposure to lithium ion batteries is a cell phone. We all know cell phones basically last a couple of years maximum yeah. because with a single cell battery in the cell phone, uh, your battery deg degradation is very, very noticeable. But when you're talking about a vehicle that has over 7,000 or 8,000 battery cells mm -hmm. in it, uh, the degradation is not as noticeable. Now, of course, when you get a very new vehicle, battery degradation is a real thing, and it's more pronounced when the vehicle is new. Call it battery seasoning, if you will. Once yeah. the batteries and the, and the chemistry has a chance to settle down, you do get some degradation. But after that, it, can, it tends to taper off, and it's a very long, slow taper. And that's what we're seeing, of course, with these numbers. So the good thing about the Model S is that, you know, the car's been in production for five years. Mm -hmm. um, so and there's a lot of good anecdotal yeah. information that's coming out now. Getting so we have some real back. world numbers to work mm -hmm. with. So my personal opinion, don't worry about it. It's a, it's right. a non-issue. And it's one of the most common questions we get when yeah. people are out, you know, what's the battery going to last because I have to buy a battery in a year? No, you don't. It's mm -hmm. not an issue. So uh, I would, you know, and the calculations are coming back, you know, they're doing some back, back of the napkin math and they're yeah. saying that these batteries could easily last 800,000 kilometers yeah. before they reach an 80% capacity. And that's why they're warranting the batteries for eight years, right? In, uh, in general, I believe. Well, they're just covering their bases, mm -hmm. unlimited kilometers, eight mm -hmm. years, whichever comes first. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. of course, it's less on the Model 3, of course, but on the yeah. Model S and, and the Model X, yeah. um, you know, there's some more margin to be able to cover the, the, the yeah. warranty. So it's it's really not a real, I'm not concerned about it. It's not, I'm not, not really either. An and the Model 3 batteries, because they're they're the newer designed ones, more dense, they should be even better. Know, from performance well probably some chemistry changes but yeah. i think mm -hmm. and again i have to reiterate the model 3 is really an exercise in cost reduction so mm -hmm. those cells even though they they have more energy density per size it's mm -hmm. it it doesn't mean it's a better battery it's just e economics Different. of scale and, and optimizing gotcha. the size of the battery you know for the size of the car and stuff so excellent so on that note about charging then, uh, more good news from Tesla about the continued expansion of their supercharger network. They've, of course, we've stated before and they've stated that they want to get to 10,000 stations by the end of this year worldwide. I forget how many stalls, but it's quite a large number of stalls within those stations. They want 18,000 by the end of 2018. It's a huge expansion. Huge. They're pouring a lot of money. Again, remember, folks, Tesla funds this on their own. This is all out of their own pocket. Yes, we pay for it. Some people pay for it, but there's not a lot of people paying for it uh, when you factor in that most of the S's and X's out there are getting free supercharging, right? And the Model 3s are just hitting the road. Now, North America has been a large focus for Tesla and supercharging because of the population needs. And uh, of course, we're such a driving culture here. So they've come up with a newer supercharger, which we'll talk about in a sec, aimed at larger urban uh, mm -hmm. areas, specifically in city centers. And they started rolling these out in New York and LA. They've also planned expansion for Mexico, both more north and south along uh, in the Mexican countryside. And, and A, Canada, 
we're finally getting some our dues here. We've been asking for cross country supercharging forever. Finally getting some love and uh, <laughs> and some love, and it's been announced that there are going to be over thirty more stations provided across the Trans Canada Highway in Canada, so that we can drive from Vancouver to Halifax and back and forth as much as we want. Awesome news for us because we have family that lives yeah. in uh, on the East Coast, mm-hmm. and getting out there is a little challenging. Uh, with just the Chatham and stuff. So this is this is excellent news. Yeah. I can't wait. Can't yeah. wait. 2019 road trip. There we go. 2019. Yeah, 2019. Exactly. Yeah. We have to give Tesla some leeway <laughs> because they're not usually on time with this kind of stuff. So, but it, but it bodes well. And of course, we have something to hold them to. So. So stay tuned. Now that new design supercharger I just mentioned has been announced in those two cities. It's you call it the four footer. I think is your nickname for it? Call it the little mini storm trooper. Storm trooper. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, first two are in Chicago and Boston right now, and these are single uh, unit chargers. Now, currently, the Tesla superchargers um, have a capacity of about 145 kilowatt per box, and that's split by two charge points. So, you, if you have two vehicles, you're splitting that up. Uh, this one is a single, so it doesn't split the power, and it gets a dedicated 72 kilowatt of capacity to charge a single vehicle. I believe these are aimed not necessarily within to go in condo, all condo buildings and, and areas like that, but certainly for public parking areas and, and in higher density downtowns where people that may not have something in their condo building can go a couple of blocks, charge for an hour, and then be good for a couple of days because most of those drivers are just staying you know short distances, right? Kind of like the person we talked to in, in Oakville on the weekend, her situation. Yeah, they've actually done these first installations in parking garages mm-hmm. in both of these locations. So for those of you who are going shopping, whatever, of course your car is going to be there for an hour or two. It's perfect for a quick top up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the smaller design makes it a little cheaper for them to deploy, I think, at the same time. And uh, yeah, it's not, uh, you know, 120 kilowatt, but then again, you rarely get 120 kilowatt on the regular superchargers, but mm-hmm. at 72, it makes it, you can get a quick top up whenever you need to. Yep. And, uh, you know, in some cases, I think it was the one in Boston, no, not Boston, it was the one in Chicago, that there is uh, a charge for parking, but I think there was a rebate or an amount that they give back to you if you're there for less than 45 minutes. There's oh. a video that... Um, oh that Chris Alessandro, also known as K-Man, he did on his video. I'll put a link in the video description. You can watch that, where he actually visited the station and had a look at it, you know, mentioned that the cables are quite a bit longer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he talked to the parking attendant there, and she explained uh, the parking situation. I think it was $20, but um, if you stay for a certain amount of less time and you're just charging, you can get it validated, and you're only paying five. Nice. So we we may see, uh, you know, uh, situations like this Mm -hmm. in in various parking. But it, it shows that Tesla's rethinking the supercharger uh, situation for the people that live in condos and in downtown areas because let's face it other than california most of the superchargers are built along the highways mm-hmm. so uh, it's really great news i'm really glad to see this and we've reported on tesla's involvement in working with large urban areas and municipalities and governments to try to increase superchargers not necessarily of just tesla superchargers but super you know charging infrastructure in general for those people who are in in higher density areas that that want to get into a, an ev but can't or one of the stumbling blocks is where am I going to charge it? So they're doing their thing with the new supercharger they're coming out with, and they're also working with other levels of government and uh, industry to uh, promote that. Yep. To get more adoption. So uh, hopefully we'll see more of these on the road. Now, in combination with the supercharging we just talked about, there was a latest uh, software update that Tesla just uh, put out over the air update recently, um, and it basically gives the the owner more information on supercharger data as far as you know. Um, how powerful that supercharger is, um, if there's being used, how many cars are in the stalls, all this kind of stuff. I think it's more detailed information that was not before there before. And also, if you're asking, you know, when you when you put your route into um, into the map and, and it lays out the superchargers, it may actually look find a supercharger that's uh, better for you, but it may not be the closest one. So it's got a little bit more smarts to it as far as defining what your needs are on your trip and then finding the best option for you. Yeah, no, it just shows that they're refining their system. This is going to keep going, um, mm-hmm. you know. So it's interesting that they're showing, uh, you know, the, the kilowatt level of, of what's available. Of course, this is, of course, important because if you're going to, you know, these new urban superchargers, mm-hmm. you, you know, you don't want to show up expecting to get 120 when it's only 72. So it's nice to see that. I, I think personally, they should have made the number a little bit more prominent or yeah. a little different color or they something might. like that, because there's been a lot of discussion, of course, online 
when you tap on the supercharger location, they show you the slots that are used. Most people would rather see green as to what's available rather than red that, uh, you know, as to what's being currently used. But mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we're splitting hairs at this point. Absolutely. But I mean, great to see that level of detail and that they are thinking of these things. And as we always say with Tesla, they are the only manufacturer today that the car will get better as time goes on. You know, Hooray for software updates. Better, it's, it's, Over the air, baby. Uh, OTA all the way. <laughs> Well, continuing on with Tesla, of course, we've got questions that we get once in a while about what's going on with the Model Y, what's happening there. There's been some recent buzz about updating the Model Y that Elon explained that the Model Y will use substantial carryover from the Model 3. So as far as the parts and what's being uh, in technologies in the Model 3 to bring it to market faster, of course. Um, our idea is that our knowledge is to cross over concepts, so a little bigger than the Model 3 sedan, but, but smaller than the Model X. Um, than a traditional SUV, and he there was even some hinting going on that the Model Y will have Falcon wind doors. I guess they they like that. You're shaking your head. Okay, well that's what I no, saw on the not tweet. Not going to happen. And then all of each <laughs> all features currently expected, you know, that we would see today in a Model Three, uh, 200 plus mile range and so forth. Uh, yeah, our friends at EV Annex uh, did a uh, um, infographics on it, an article. If you want to go to their site and check that out, but uh, what do you think? I'll put a link. Uh, a link, a link. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be interesting. I think it's still early days for the Model Y. Yeah. I mean, Tesla is up to their neck right now in production oh, yeah. hell with the Model 3. So they need to really stay focused and stuff. But that doesn't mean that designers working in Hawthorne <laughs> are not uh, working on several they different gotta, things. They got to keep busy, right? Yeah, yeah. They got to keep busy. I mm -hmm. mean, Franz von Holzhausen said it himself. Yeah. I mean, I work on Model S every day. So there are always little refinements, of course, right. uh, going into yeah, the cars. True. But I think it's still early days. And don't forget, they may not call it the Y. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Who knows? Some news about Tesla continuing to dominate the EV sales market, or the, the, especially the battery electric only uh, vehicle market, uh, both in the U.S. and around the world. For the first half of 2017, Tesla dominated the market with a 45% share of that electric vehicle sales, which is quite strong. And that's without any Model 3s or Let's give it a, year I mean, and see what a couple happens. of Model 3s. Yeah, wait and see what happens there. And then when you look at the rest of the world, they're leading as at the end of July from a year to date for, uh, for a Tesla for a number of sales there. Um, again, it just shows you how, you know, how their brand is increasing. And, and again, you know, that's amazing to think about it. And how much do they spend on marketing again? Uh, zero. Uh-huh. Just as much as we spend on marketing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we get it. Um, so anyway, it's just fantastic news and just goes to show you that people are really starting to, to capture uh, uh, the likes of Tesla and look at them more seriously, especially a, when you get a mid-priced. It's a compelling car, right? vehicle mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, it's brand awareness, you know. Just word of mouth. That's all it is. All good. Make a good product and they will come. Yeah. And they continue to grow in China phenomenally. As a matter Huge. of fact, in, in, yeah, in 2016, they, they tripled their sales to a billion dollars. That's a, a one with a B at the next to it. Uh, with over 11,000 deliveries in China, and they're growing that with another record quarters in 2017. Now, again, that's despite Tesla not really having access to all the EV incentives that are available in China. And they're, they also, their vehicles are subject to a 25% import duty tax mm -hmm. uh, or, or fee. Um, and they're still having those kind of numbers. Um, by the way, I don't know if you knew, but China has over 150 supercharger stations deployed today with more than 700 uh, supercharger outlets or stalls that's second only to the u.s i had no idea until i read this article recently that uh, that yeah. they had that much infrastructure installed from a tesla perspective and uh, that there's planned to grow it to a thousand stations by the end of this year uh, for those who don't know china is a phenomenal market they have three or four dedicated manufacturers that have full ev only vehicles that are selling like crazy in there. BYD is one, I forget the other two. Mm -hmm. We don't really report on those because BYD. they're specifically to in-country only to China, but um, it just shows that that market is going crazy. I just can't wait to see what's going to happen because if Tesla announces a factory for China and they start making Which the Model 3 about. over there, mm -hmm. of course, with the combination of China on the verge of Ooh. banning the sales of, uh, right. of EVs in That's a few right. years' time, not, mm -hmm. not now, but in a few years' time. They're being very progressive about Ooh. that. Yeah. Watch the numbers roll in. Be they huge. won't be able to crank those out fast enough. Uh, no. <laughs> really? There'll be guys standing right at the end of the line. That's Here right. you go. Next. Yeah. <laughs> so great news for, for Tesla growth in, in China and hence uh, why we're seeing some of their, their stock again do the do the up and down bounce <laughs> game this week. Yeah. It's been an interesting ride. 
Uh, and Tesla, of course, keeps getting asked about this pickup truck. When are they doing this pickup truck? We know it's a big market, specifically here in North America. Um, Elon had, did some recent hinting on this on Twitter. Um, he said that it could be based on the same platform as a semi or technology as I a semi. I think he was joking about that. I think he was joking. That'd be a, a pretty big truck. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, maybe some of the technology just uh, shimmed down for pickup. That it's still in early stages of development and that the, a reveal will happen sometime in 2019 or 2020. Um, and that um, th there might be more info at the semi reveal coming up. When's that October? This uh, month, the 29th no, or something? No, they, they were supposed to be at the end of September, but mm -hmm. uh, Elon said that they're going to hold it tentatively on the 26th of October. Oh, okay. Now, Ken and I won't be attending to that, but I'm sure there's some no. other YouTubers like Ben and st and the others might be attending to Get that. down there, yeah. That's not for me. I mean, I, I don't need a semi-truck and stuff, but it's interesting to note, not though. Yet, not yet. Well, who not knows? yet. Maybe if I buy a mobile home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My wife's been making noise about getting an EV mobile home. There you go. Uh, anyhow. Get that semi. Uh, but I think what we're seeing here is Tesla's um, taking, uh, parlaying some of that Model 3 technology, yeah. cost, you know, the you know the economies of scale and the cost of the motors and stuff, because we know mm -hmm. that they've announced that they're going to put these motors in the semi-truck. So, uh, you know, of course, with the Model Y, that they're going to be putting mm -hmm. a lot of that technology in there. So it just makes sense to me that they would just keep going and just mm -hmm. do this for the pickup truck. So yep. huge market. Lots of people would like these. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's literally the last thing that they need to put in place to really have, yeah. you know, compelling vehicles for, you know, the North American market because pickups are huge. And a, just a lot of smart thinking there, as you said, you know, planning for the future, uh, all these different elements and how we can link them all together with those economies of scale. Speaking of the pickup, mm -hmm. I think what Tesla may end up doing here is building something more like a unibody pickup, like the Honda Ridgeline, mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than a body on frame. Mm -hmm. I think it, uh, it'd be interesting. Which to is see a good truck, do. by the way, too. Oh, it's they're, neat. They're yeah, neat. For sure. There's a lot of them on the road, and they yeah. hold their value quite yeah. well. So actually. there's been a lot of renders yeah. have been floating around stuff, but it wouldn't surprise me that it would look uh, like a Honda, you know, something like a Honda Ridgeline. So so stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Now I remember the days that I'm going to date myself when I'm driving around and I'm driving past a McDonald's and I see those sign over one billion served. Well, of course those those have been billions and billions since then <laughs> those days. But how about EVs? I mean, uh, are there? Can we really get to one billion EVs in, in a short future? Well, according to Morgan Stanley, there's a report that they just came out with uh, right now that's stating that 2% of the global market share of the consumer automotive industry or, or transport needs are, are comprised of electric vehicles. And that would include plug-ins and, and hybrids of some sorts as well. But of course, we all know that EV is now a disruptive technology, and you've said that many times, and we've, we've been telling people that. They're finally figuring that out, so they put their stamp saying, yeah, it's a disrupting technology, and it's coming sooner in a big way. Well... We kind of know that. What's interesting, though, is that they put the target for 1 billion electric vehicles to be deployed around the globe around 2050. And that's that's quite a, a huge a leap when you look at it. It's still a ways away. But that would be that would make up probably about 80 percent of the global passenger car fleet at that time if it were to happen. Um, you know, we've been saying for a long time that part of the, the growth is really going to hockey stick. So you mentioned the mm -hmm. S-curve for Tesla production. You can use that same analogy for adoption and growth in the EV marketplace. When cost parity gets there, it's going to take off, right? You know, and I was telling people at some of the events this weekend, you know, I could spend 25 grand on a Honda Civic uh, ICE or I could spend 25 grand on an EV about the same range. But with all the benefits of an EV, why wouldn't I? And when that happens, we're going to see the market take off. And, and I think there's other, other fellow YouTubers and journalists out there that agree that uh, it'll happen probably between 2020 and 2025. And we keep throwing 2020 around. We should make a movie on that. Right? And that been done as a magical year. And that could be you know, the start of that. And Morgan Stanley agrees in their report they're seeing cost parity. To, that could happen around 2025. And, you know, as you talked about earlier, Trevor, battery technologies in uh, in the chemistry is getting better, getting cheaper to manufacture. We know Elon's striving for that $100 per kilowatt hour, right? If I got that right, price point, you know, they're not there yet. Um, what's your take on that? You know, additional feedback. Well, yeah, I mean, it's pretty important when you factor in because, um, you know, I've had this discussion, of course, as you said, mm -hmm. on the weekend with many different people. Um, you know, we, we've been uh, very much in the mindset uh, with the ICE vehicles is what is this car going to cost me to drive it off the lot today? We don't really think about maintenance and we don't really think about gasoline costs because those are just kind of givens. They're already there. But when you look at an EV, you have to look at the whole total cost of ownership. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, um, unless you're spending a lot of money on the car and putting all that extra money into the vehicle, 
that that's money in your pocket. So when you start factoring that into your calculations cost, uh, I mean, now you, you end up with uh, you know much much better vehicle long term that's going to last yeah. longer and it's going to you know do better things for you more technologically advanced. I mean, mm -hmm. we just had friends on the weekend that had an accident in their Kia Soul. And uh, they're in the market immediately to buy something else. And they came out to the event to look at the Kia Soul. And I said, well, you know, I know your budget's not Model S, but why don't you look at a Chevy Bolt? And now they're going crazy trying right. to find a Chevy Bolt. They can't find one right now. Seven months, I think. But they've time, done but the calculations. She yeah. came and showed me. She had a sheet of paper and she'd done all the calculations. Yeah. So the mindset's there. It's starting to happen. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. tipping point has arrived on the manufacturing side because Agreed. every manufacturer, including Mazda recently, we talked about that on the last mm -hmm. show, has finally realized that they have to get into the EV market. Mm -hmm. But the tipping point hasn't arrived in people's minds yet, but it's right. starting to happen. Right. We're seeing more and more people come out. Like when I volunteered last year at the uh, Electric Drive Week, mm -hmm. I mean, we had a few people, and this year's been even bigger. And, of course, you went to the Kitchener one, and you said, how many people, you said? Uh, conservatively, they announced 450, but it was over 600 that, that's for the whole amazing. day. It was just so, a huge draw. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. snowballing. That's what's mm -hmm. happening. So, yeah. But at the end of the day, when you do your cost comparison and you start adding up these numbers, it actually makes sense. But in a few more years, once the battery costs come down and uh, you know the total cost of ownership is even lower, because once it reaches cost parity, without even factoring in all of your cost of ownership, and all the extraneous stuff they have to do, mm -hmm. it's game over. It's yeah. basically just going to keep going. And and that curve will accelerate. Yes. The hockey stick will mm -hmm. happen. So yeah. yeah. So it's just you know it's just great to see some of the the notable analysts starting to to uh, illustrate what we've been talking about since we started the show. Yeah, you know, I have to <laughs> mention know, though that yeah, we have to mention though that it, it, sales will accelerate. Mm -hmm. it, replacing the fleet on the other hand is going to take a generation. Oh, so just at least yeah. separate those two things and That's then. Right. And, and I'm good. and when I speak about it, it's more about the consumer side of things. You know, your your passenger vehicles, as in this report, not necessarily the commercial side. So trains, planes, trucks, all this stuff. Yeah, we're seeing electric trucks, but that's going to take a very long time, maybe a generation for something like that. I mean, technology isn't there sustainable today for some of those modes of transport, but who knows? Well, right? the technology exists on the vehicle front. It's the right. infrastructure that needs to catch mm -hmm. up for some of that stuff. Right. We're seeing right. the infrastructure now growing like crazy for passenger vehicles. Yes. Just if you put a larger battery pack, we'll talk about that here in a second with, with another article. Mm -hmm. But when you start putting larger and larger battery packs, now your charging time takes longer and longer and longer. So, I mean, everything has to be weighed out and stuff, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. So we'll keep an eye on uh, We'll keep a good close eye on this one. And as we keep watching what's going on around the world, Germany just, uh, there's a report coming from Germany that they've announced that the government has awarded a four, just over 4 million euro contract to a company called Fastned. They're an independent EV charging network, and they're going to build 25 fast charging stations in the country. Now, this is addition to everything else that's going on in Germany. There's a lot of infrastructure being built everywhere. Um, it's part of their stimulus package to help spur the adoption of EVs, which is, again, unique for a for Germany, for a, a, such a hard core driving culture to really have this massive shift. You know, they've announced that they're looking at the ban of ICE sales as well in a certain time period. Uh, to look at that. The stations will be equipped with the latest high power chargers um, that can add, uh, well, they're saying 250 of uh, NEDC range, a kilometer range in about 20 minutes. They don't say what kind there are, so I'm guessing they're 150s maybe, or maybe between 150 and 350s. I know we're, we're hearing about ultra fast, uh, super fast coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be uh, opening in tw early 2018 and they kind of look like a McDonald's, but with this half golden <laughs> arch thing. But so if you see it, don't get it confused with McDonald's. The I can't tell in the photograph. Is that a rendering <laughs> or is that a real photograph? Uh, that's a real one. They have, uh, they're adopting those ones. Yeah. How long strange. before they get a cease and desist? On I don't know. <laughs> uh, unless they're going to start selling Big Macs or something. they start selling hamburgers. They get a little kiosk be... <laughs> going. Uh, they'll, they'll be both CCS and uh, Combo, I guess, and Chatabo. And then for, if you're a Tesla owner, you go there, they're actually going to be providing free um, Tesla, Chatabo charging adapters. Oh, so excellent. you can plug your Tesla in. So cool. There you go. As we say, you know, anywhere there's a plug, you can charge. Just depends on time, how much time you have, and there's all kinds That's of different right. places. Um, let's get into what's going on in the other manufacturer news. That Nissan Leaf, boy, that too got a lot of press. Here we go. So we, we did a story last time about it that before the announcement. Of course, that announcement it's came now. out on September 5th. Um, I watched the, the stream, not the live stream, but I watched the recast of it mm -hmm. online. And there's a bunch of talking points that I'll go through very quickly on the Leaf. Um, as you folks know, yes, we're, we love our Model 3. 
we have reservations. We love Tesla, but we're really big fans of the Leaf because really the Leaf is one of those cars that, that kind of kicked off the EV movement. Mm -hmm. It moved it to another level, and the Tesla Model 3 moved it to an, a gain another level. Right, that's how we how we we look at it. So we're very happy that that the Leaf Two has come out, albeit a bit late, mm -hmm. albeit not exactly the way we'd like to see it um, from a from a function perspective. But it's you know it's got a new design body and interior design as well. I mean, a lot of the interiors, the front's very similar to the existing Leaf that's out there today as far as the interior. Well, the way I look at it, and I mean, I've looked at the pictures, of course, yep. and, and, and you'll put a bunch I'll put up lots there. of pictures here because we you had somebody, bunch, at, yeah, we had somebody at the Japanese launch event and had a good look uh, at the, at the car. Um, it looks to me like between like the front and the back of the car, like the cabin is literally the same leaf. All they did was change the front and the back of the car and largely change a little bit of the interior, but mm -hmm. it's largely mm -hmm. a lot of the same cars. And I, and I understand I think we're going to talk about it here is like we were really hoping for something a little, you know, more and stuff. More. But, uh, yeah. you know, I fully expected them to do, you know, a front end refresh to be mm -hmm. more within this end, uh, uh, you know, design language. That makes right. sense. I mean, most manufacturers do that anyway. Yeah. They have kept that whole family now. Exactly. They've streamlined it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So what we're looking at here, I think, is uh, to, uh, I don't think Nissan really wanted to rock the boat too much. Nope. They just kind of want to say, you know what, the you know, Leaf owners have been looking for a little more range and not quite so weird looking. Uh, so let's fix those shortcomings. But leaf owners approach. love that look, though. Well, and, and there's know, nothing wrong with that. Hate, there's nothing right? wrong yeah. with that. But, yeah. you know, of course, we're so close to the forest, yeah. you know, with Tesla and looking at the Model 3 and being such a huge game changer, we were kind of expecting, you know, 200 miles minimum range and mm -hmm. more technology and more yeah. sleek styling. And, um, I mean, it's not a bad car, don't get me wrong. It's just... Hmm. Maybe maybe we were guilty of putting our expectations yeah. a little too high. That's a good point. I would tend to agree with that. I mean, you know, they are. I think one of the the negatives from our perspective is they're just initially coming out with a forty kilowatt hour battery. Well, they pack, did announce right? they're going to have something bigger next. They are year. going to have a sixty should, next year, and that should push the car over two hundred miles. But that's again, they're saying late twenty eighteen, and I, you know. Maybe they're they're thinking, well, that's really when Tesla's going to start be able to pump out the Model Threes of in, in any size, you know, in any quantity by then. So we don't necessarily need to come out with a sixty now. I think that's a missed opportunity for them. I really think had they announced the sixty now and start shipping by the end of this year in North America, they could really capitalize on that market. You know, I wouldn't be surprised um, that some reservationists might change their minds or might adopt to get a, get one of those before their Model 3. I think you know, they're losing a bit. 40 is not bad, but again, Tesla raised that bar so high for that price point that you kind of almost have to be there as table stakes. But they are 200 plus miles, as you mentioned. Um, no, 150. Uh, 150, sorry, 150 yeah. uh, EPA, EPA range. That's right, not the uh, NEDC. Uh, when you mentioned technology, they've, they've upgraded their technology with something they call ProPilot, which, which is, is based on four cameras surrounding it and 12 ultrasonic sensors. It controls steering, acceleration, and brakes, uh, things like single lane driving. Uh, you know, It's a combo of combination of lane keeping and adaptive cruise control. So it's control. very similar to Autopilot version very 1. Very similar to Autopilot. And where Autopilot exactly. version 2 is now, but not mm -hmm. in the near future. That's so. right. Uh, ProPilot Park, they, they did a demo on that or talked about that. It really controls all, all the operations for parking uh, into the lane, into a garage or, or parallel parking and self-parking. That's what I need. You can I do need. that today with summons and with Tesla that. today. Need that. You need that today. Yeah. They really went on about this e-pedal thing, and that's nothing really new. They're just kind of glorifying the one-pedal experience. And mm -hmm. we, we when we drove the Bolt, remember yeah, the Bolt last has year a we really... Uh, talked about that you can get that from a tesla of, of course as well and and well, most not to the same extent not to the same extent no. um it's really to, you know for starting accelerating and holding the vehicle uh through the pedal you can hold on a hill that kind of thing mm -hmm. um and it's a combo of the regenerative braking and friction brake so it does it does maximize that um to give you that one pedal driving we did it on the bolt and it worked well it took a uh, what two minutes to get used to it right? oh it's just, yeah to it's, the feel of that a, they, they actually did a really good job right. with the bolt with the one yeah. pedal driving i and, liked it a lot and obviously this is designed for urban environments so they're ha they had that stop and go mentality in mind yeah. so they're 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 engineering this for that type of environments and of course safety with automatic emergency braking cameras for seeing opticals and pedestrians and and that kind of stuff and if the wrong pedals pressed it'll override based on the safety surroundings so it's got some intelligence to say and sometimes it happens you know maybe your foot will slip onto the wrong pedal or you just hit the wrong pedal when you're not supposed to the car has some intelligence to override that um, new inverters in the vehicle they're talking about 110 kilowatt max outputs 
for these inverters. It's a little bit more. 40 kilowatt battery, a kilowatt hour battery gives you the 40% boost from the current 30 that's out there today. That'll be available um, in early 2018 in USA and Europe. I'm guessing February, maybe late January, February, mm-hmm. and then others uh, later in the year. And then the 60 kilowatt hour battery version late 2018, early 2019. And you mentioned a price. 29.9 US as a starting point. So I thought so, in Canadian it was around 36. Was that so right? I think it's going to be relatively close to what it is today which isn't a bad value if you're getting a bigger battery and all these new features at a similar price that you can get a and I And today. I haven't really looked at pricing, but it's around 36 Yeah, think? I think they start now um, uh, Canadian-wise around the 36 to 38 range and okay. top out at 42 So it's very similar to the um, Volkswagen mm-hmm. Eagle. Yeah, better very similar that. pricing. Yeah, yeah. So good for them. Um, again, I, I kind of wish they would have come out with the 60 first because I think they're kind of missing an opportunity, but they've got their reasoning and maybe it's a different battery architecture they're working on or chemistry. Oh, or... I, you know, speaking of batteries on mm-hmm. the LEAF, um, yeah. very disappointed to find out they did not do an active thermal management system. They just add, they added fans yeah. to it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, hopefully... Yeah, we'll yeah. see how that works in, Yeah, in because climates, you know, yeah. anybody who knows a leaf in hotter climates knows that uh, battery degradation on them has been quite severe on, yeah. the, on the battery packs. And, you know, they've had some warranty issues where they've replaced them and, and right. some other people actually paid for the replacement. They lizard batteries before yeah. and stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I was a little surprised to see that they didn't do a liquid-cooled system. So we'll have to see what that does, but... Uh, yeah. And maybe, maybe that's what they're doing for the 60. So maybe it's a whole new engineer and that's why there's a delay. That and that... That would be smart if that's what they're going to do. We'll wait and see. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, a lot of these things we're talking about are coming out from the Frankfurt Auto Show, which is happening now as mm-hmm. we speak. And there's some things that we don't have yet uh, as of this taping that haven't been released. But on the BMW front, they did announce a small design refresh for the i3 uh, and, a, and a new sport package. Not really anything to do that's earth shattering. Um, slightly higher performance motor with 135 kilowatt uh, motor versus the 125 before and a little bit better su- sport suspension as they're calling it mm-hmm. um, I still think is disappointing they haven't changed the battery at all it's still the same 33 kilowatt hour battery pack and uh, which gives you about a hundred and a quarter US EPA miles range uh, I, don't know, I know you like the i3 but I thought they might come out with something a little bit more than that well, I have to make it clear. Update, I like the yeah. engineering of the i3. Mm-hmm. I like the thought that yeah. goes into the car. Yes, the range is an issue. Uh, looks aside, because that's very polarizing. That's that's fine. I think it's a very clever car. Um, but as a primary vehicle for a whole family, I mean, it, it's just not capable of doing you know right. any kind of serious long distance. Yeah. I mean, I know some people buy the range extender yeah. model to to extend that, and it can mm-hmm. be done, but it's not you know. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, of course, I think BMW has really announced that they're they're going all in with EVs with more development because yeah. they had a bit of a false start and then they changed. They've been flip flopping yes. a little bit recently, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm I'm hopeful that they're finally going to do something. Yeah. And of course, you mentioned that the Frankfurt show is on, and I think they hinted that they were going to make a big announcement. Of course, the big elephant in the room is a fully electric version of the right. 3 Series. Which I think we mentioned a show or two shows ago. Exactly. Yeah. So um, if they do that right and they get their range mm-hmm. right, um, they will have a very good contender. Of course, don't forget, the Model 3 is completely and squarely aimed at that market segment, the, yep. you know, the BMW 3 Series. So I'm sure that there are some quivering boots uh, <laughs> in the BMW headquarters uh, you know, because of the Model 3 coming online that they have to fight against that. Yep. So by electrifying the 3 Series... And doing it right, they stand a chance to actually survive that potential. That'd be onslaught. a great battle to see because, you know, I have ultimate, a lot of respect for BMW. I really do a lot of I the do. Cars. I really like them. the cars. Yeah. I've owned three different yeah. BMWs yeah. over the years that have always been uh, excellent cars. Now, I know mm-hmm. there was also an article that was floating around this week, of course, where somebody was claiming that the three, uh, the, uh, the Model 3 is going to kill the BMW 3 Series. I don't believe that at no. all. It will hurt, but it will not decimate or kill right. them. We need to really retire yeah, that term. I, I think so. That term. Yeah, I agree. Um, but these car companies that are making the cars in that, you know, entry luxury class have to really watch out because Tesla's got a real killer car on their hands here. So, uh, over the next year, it's going to be really quite interesting to see what mm-hmm. happens, but, uh, all the best to them. They really need to do something. Right. So I'm going to be paying attention and hopefully we'll, we'll see something. Hopefully like I'll have that. something for the next show. Yeah. We'll get more specs on that. And mm-hmm. of course they did also announce BMW, the all electric mini. Now they had an E mini, an E mini before, Back in the late 2000s, I believe, it didn't kind of go anywhere. Uh, now they brought it back as a new design concept scheduled for production in 2019. No specs were released, but again, they're saying it's going to sit somewhere between the more affordable Leaf and the high-end i3. 
would you call it i3 high end? I don't know. I guess so. Well, price wise, price wise, it is. Price -wise it is. <laughs> and uh, BMW will market the car as electric power for the mass market. So there's that mass market you word. Be careful so when you use that term. It better be mass market priced. Yeah. Otherwise, you can't, you know, mass market it. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, folks, and we've said it before. To me, mass market means twenty to twenty-five thousand. You know, like nineteen-nine to twenty-five thousand. That's mass market, right? Like a Kia Rio or you know a Chevy. Uh, not even a cruise, whatever's below the cruise. Oh, they had the spark, but I don't know what no, they have now. But really, are the cruise. I mean, that's that's your mass market yeah. price. Honda if you Civic. Really, Honda Civic, right? Yeah. Uh, 20, 25 tops. If you can bring in an EV that gives you, you know, three hundred mile, uh, two hundred fifty mile range at that price point, boy, are you going to do some? That's going to be a few more years. Going to yep. be a few more years. So, let's see where they. Hopefully, they'll get some specs online next year, and we'll see what where it comes in as. But good, good for them. At least they're doing some. And more news from the show, Mercedes, uh, of course, we talked about those, these guys uh, months ago about their electric EQ that they're coming out with. It's kind of a, an SUV-ish type vehicle, a little bit bigger. Um, well, if you live in Norway, so Bjorn, go for it, man. Uh, get $2,500 get $2, US and throw a deposit on and make a reservation on the all-new uh, all-electric EQ from Mercedes. Um, they've opened the doors for reservations. Uh, they've said they've already got well over 2,000 reservations within the first early part of September, which is uh, interesting. So that's good for them. It won't be available for another year or so, though, till 2019. Mm -hmm. Does this sound familiar? <laughs> uh, anyway, and uh, the concept, at least, is equipped with a 70 kilowatt hour battery, good for about 500. Boy, I love how they give these miles. 310 <sighs> miles NEDC, of course. But Not when EPA. You factor it into EPA. It's more like 220 miles, which is still decent for something like that, of course. Course. we have no idea on any other specs as far as charging times and what type of charger no pricing no, no pricing other than you can throw twenty five hundred dollars us and and put your you know put, pick a spot in the line for it it's and, interesting uh, that mercedes is going squarely after the suv market that's yeah. the number one seller everywhere yeah uh, for this and of course they've done they, very well on the ice side for that i mean yeah they've oh yes very well with their, yeah their so has side. audi for that matter and audi mm -hmm. yeah and for as what they used to say and now it? for something completely That's different right. was that a monty python yeah it's monty python. there we go <laughs> and for something completely different um us-based electric bus manufacturer proterra they upgraded one of their current 40-foot catalyst e2 buses uh, as you would see your normal passenger buses they call it the e2 max and why it's called the max is because they just jammed it with a 660 massive kilowatt hour battery pack Holy in this wow. thing must weigh a, a ton. <laughs> they took it to some proving grounds uh, in New Carlisle, Indiana, the Navistar proving grounds, to test it. And they just ran circles around the track as long as they could on a full charge to try to get a distant record, distance record. And they actually achieved it. They traveled over 1,100 miles on a full charge before it ran out of juice. And uh, again, as they're proving out the new technology. So it's just, it's fascinating to see where things are going. I would never, you know, if I would have told you this a year ago, you might've thought I was off my rocker, so. It's interesting to see. I mean, at, at San Francisco, we took quite a bit of buses and a lot of them are electrified. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, they're on tracks above head, mm -hmm. but uh, being independent like this frees them up to be able to do other yeah. things. So this is this is good. This is this is going to happen. Yeah. You're going to see a lot of coming. I think the uh, what was it Edmonton or something just took deliveries of some new buses. Yeah, too? Uh, well, even here locally, I think Brampton has some now. Mm -hmm. uh, EV. Uh, electric vehicle only or mm -hmm. EV owned battery only buses it's happening maybe in Mississauga some of the local transits around yeah. here it's definitely coming because again for you know you're driving only at maybe 100k a day or in a route but you're just you're doing it all day and then come in take another bus that, that's plugged in and mm -hmm. off you go so yeah so there you go technologies are happening so it's mailbag, mailbag time. time we love mailbag alright what do we have on tap alright got a couple this of mailbags um, one of them is from Eric, he doesn't say where he's from. Oh, from Montreal. Hi. He says hi. Uh, sorry, Ali. I did that all wrong. It's Ali from Montreal. Mm -hmm. He says he's a big fan, and I know we have lots of fans there that we're watching, especially us during the uh, the launch event. We appreciate that. Uh, they're asking. Uh, uh, he's he or it could be she. I'm not sure. Mm. Um, is asking if there will be a leasing option available for the three, or are we stuck with cash or financing? Oh, I know where this here. is coming so, from. So, what you? I mean. I, they have to have residual calculations in order to lease. So yeah, well, that's, that's the big thing the right thing, now right? because it's mm -hmm. early days of Model 3 production. And and this is coming from because, you know, um, the configurator for employees is leaked and there's no mention of leasing right. anywhere on there. There you go. And um, you know what? This is kind of harkening back to the Model S days when they first came out. It was cash only. They had no leasing options and stuff. 
Um, for how long? Do you remember? Was it like a oh, year? Probably, yeah, it was like a year and so before mm-hmm. they actually announced the leasing plan. Okay. Um, so yeah, we, we will see leasing on the Model 3. I'm pretty confident of that, but it, but it may not happen for quite a while, right. or at least until customer deliveries uh, come out. Because let's face it, they're only going to employees and internal people mm-hmm. at Tesla at this point. So let's just wait and see. But uh, I mean, who doesn't have a leasing option these days? I mean, right, exactly. it'd be crazy not to. So Now on that note, though, the Model 3, like if, if we get our deliveries in Canada, which we project to be around this time or a little bit later next year, so about a year from now, hopefully sooner, but I'm still saying Q4 of next year. I'm leaning towards um, that ways too now. That would make it that the Model 3 has been out in the market publicly for about a year. Would that be a but in the U.S. only? Would that be enough for you know for Tesla to calculate uh, values for the Canadian market? As an I, example. I would By ho- then, I would hope so. I would hope so. I would, yeah. I would hope okay. so. Yeah. So there is there is you know light at the end of the tunnel. It's an important question for me because I'm considering leasing, especially if they come out with you know 0.99 or something ridiculous you know crazy. Financing, well, money's still right? cheap these days. I yeah, mean, Tesla has uh, some really good financing on the Model S and the Model. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've heard as low as 0.99 or yeah. 99 0.9 nine percent in the yep. u.s and uh here in canada it's like a 1.49 yeah, percent financing yeah. mm-hmm. i mean it's still pretty cheap so uh well, mm-hmm. hopefully we'll see this but uh, thanks for writing it. that's a very valid question yes. if we find out more we'll let you know merci beaucoup Eli. there you go uh another e- email from robin and robin does not say oh and montreal as well oh another uh, outside from uh Repentigny? Repentigny? Repentigny. There you go. I knew I would butcher it, but he got it right <laughs> outside of Montreal. Leave it to the French guy. Uh, he's wondering if there's any advantages, of, and we've had this before me, of buying the Tesla charger for your home versus another kind, uh, you know, like a Flow or, or, or any of the other guys mm. that are out there. Any pros or cons? Um, convenience and aesthetics. That's basically it. I did a video back in the um, in the spring, and I'll put mm-hmm. a link in the show in yeah. the video description there so you can watch that video uh, where I did the installation of my Tesla wall connector. Um, I did it primarily because I didn't want to have to futz with the um, UMC, which is the universal mobile right. connector that comes with every Tesla, to take it out of the bag and unzip it and plug it into the car. And the next day, to, you know, every time mm-hmm. I want to go, it's got to come in and out of the car. I know a lot of people want to put some kind of wall connector on the wall. doesn't necessarily have to be a Tesla. Right. It can be any of them. Yep. The only difference between the Tesla and the other ones is two things. One of them is the Tesla just plugs straight into the car without the need of an adapter, even though the adapter is included with the car. And uh, the second one is that the Tesla uh, wall connector can do up to 80 amps on it with load sharing, which means if you own two Teslas or more, you can chain up the four of them together and they can take a single circuit and load balance it. Um, I don't think mm-hmm. there's many others on the market at that so, price point that can do it. So as long as your panel can handle that. Yeah, right? and the Tesla mm-hmm. wall connector is $500 US, and I've looked at the others, and they're all over uh, seven, yeah, eight hundred, nine dollars So it's it's actually an excellent value if you want something that's convenient, and you can put it on the wall, and it's, wet, and it's weatherproof. So mm-hmm. no, you don't need it. At the very least, you need a, a NEMA 1450, 240 volt, or whatever it is in Europe that you need. Uh, but I'm talking about North America here. You need that very minimum in your garage to get a decent charge. Mm-hmm. But if you want something convenient and stuff, uh, you know, the Tesla wall connector is actually a really good value. Yeah. So I know I'm going to go with Tesla. You've already done that. I'm going to do the same as well. Cause, uh, and don't forget, depending on where you live, you mm-hmm. get rebates on, on, on the wall connectors, on the charger device. The EVSE is, as technically known. Yep. You can get some pretty good rebates on those. So, um, yeah, thanks for writing in. It's a very good question. Yeah. But um, again, watch the video that I did on the whole installation process and what's included in the box if you're interested in getting one. So merci beaucoup again. we got a lot of Canadians hitting us up these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, quick email from Tim. Uh, we, you talked about this just earlier on the show, but just another question about the 400 kilowatt hour supercharging credit for the Model 3. Mm. Um, it, it, he's still a little confused about that. So how does that work again on, currently as we know it for okay. the Model 3? Now, I'm kind of paraphrasing here. I'm just going by memory. Um uh, Tesla, re, uh, at the start of uh, 2017, had re, have rejiggered the supercharging program now, where um, every year you're given 400 kilowatt hours of free supercharging in your My Tesla account. Now, if you're a Model S or Model X owner, depending on when you bought your car, or if you uh, use a referral code until now, until the end of the year, you get super supercharging included for free with the car. So I think Tesla really was laying the groundwork for a pay-per-use system uh, with the Model 3 coming online. 
So until things change, this is all we have to go on. So this is what you're going to have to factor in. Now, Tesla does have um, a link on their website. I'll put it in the video description, yet another one. You can go and look at it, and you can pick whatever country you're in, and you can see whether they're charging you uh, by the hour, by the minute, I should say, or the kilowatt hour, because regulations change, of course, mm -hmm. between countries, and you can get a pretty good idea. Now, I'll give you an example. Here in Ontario, for us to travel between, say, Toronto and Montreal, um, they're selling it to us by the minute because they can't sell it by the kilowatt because they're not a utility. Right. Yeah. Um, the average trip cost is about $15 in a Model S to go to uh, to Montreal. So uh, quite a bit cheaper than me going in my gas car, but it might be mm -hmm. different in other places. So mm -hmm. if you can get it by the kilowatt hour, depending where you are, it's certainly cheaper than by the minute, but at least it's cheaper than gasoline no matter which way you look at it. There so again, uh, unless we see anything different, Tesla, because they've been known to rejigger mm -hmm. this program quite a few times, and they may. Uh, this is what we have to right. go on. So, And that 400 kilowatt is about... They, four to four to six top ups is what they say. They claim you know, roughly, it's about a thousand right? miles of travel yeah. on the on, mm -hmm. average, on average sixteen hundred yeah. kilometers. So so not bad. I'll take that. So so thank you for the question. Uh, Jake from Michigan uh, sent us a, a nice email with a lot of questions. So I'm going to paraphrase some of these questions just to slim them down. But okay. one of them is, can you change out the wood dash on that premium material, <laughs> the Model 3? Have you heard anything about that? My first light bulb is aftermarket, but uh, I don't know. Nothing nothing that we're, we're from Tesla, right? Okay, well, uh, this is all unknown at this point. Um, mm -hmm. What Tesla's producing now is the premium interior. The premium yep. interior is all black, and it has that wood grain mm -hmm. in there. It is a real wood. It's I not think a with the white interior, though. Okay, well, we have seen the white interior both mm -hmm. on the prototype, and we did see one white car driving around where it had the white seats, and that strip of wood in there was white, and we don't mm -hmm. know what the material it is. Don't mm -hmm. know if it's plastic or whatever it is. Or film, yeah. Mm -hmm. I fully expect the cottage industry to pop up of some kind of either appliques mm -hmm. that go on top of it or if Tesla makes it easy enough to remove. I don't know. I don't have schematics. I don't know what's going to happen. I know the guys at FNX have been asking because we have a link on our forum. I'll put mm -hmm. it in the video description again. You can watch that. The guys at FNX have come onto our forum and asked people, what would you like to see for Model 3 accessories? And uh, that's one of the things that keeps coming up. I yeah. want to see carbon fiber. I want this. That's I want right. that. Yeah. So... Um, Personally, my my opinion at the, at this point is I don't think it's replaceable, um, easily replaceable at this point because if you look at a Model S or a Model X, it is removable, but it takes some effort to take out. Uh, but they're actually quite expensive because I mean there's no other manufacturers other than the Tesla supplier making mm -hmm. them. There are applications you can get, but if you want that real wood to be completely replaced, let's say out of another Model S or a Model X, you got to pay some big bucks for that. It's not cheap. So uh, yeah. we'll see. Um, but uh, I fully expect to see, um, you know, other things to come on the market, third-party accessories. And I think yeah. that's one of the number one things that people are asking So for about. the future, I like the wood. Likely. I like the wood, but yeah. a lot of people don't yeah. like it. And I, I get know. it. It's, it's subjective. Mm -hmm. So um, Jake also asks, any word on a second version of the sport wheel that could come, uh, like the slipstream wheels on the S? Uh, again, I mean, anything's possible with Tesla as far as what they want to offer, but my our understanding is they want to keep these initial orders as simple as possible oh, yeah. so they can ramp up. Uh, whether they'll announce different wheels for it in the future, probably, but right now only when. the two designs. Right. Now Tesla has changed the wheels on the Model S a mm -hmm. few times over the last five years. Yeah. I expect them to change it on the Model 3 eventually yep. as little facelifts and things occur. But right now, it's the 18 and the 19. Yep. And if you want anything else, well, you'll have to go uh, third party. Third for party. Stuff. Yeah. Third mar aftermarket. Mm -hmm. uh, and he also asked, when they announce the, the ranges based on the battery sizes, are those ranges at 100% battery size or are they scaled to like 80% to give some some? No, 100%. There? That's my understanding mm -hmm. as well. So yeah. any of the, the manufacturers out there, when they're when they're quoting uh, EPA or NEDC ranges, those are from full charges, not from eighty. Yeah. So or on on nice. a daily charge, if you're going to charge mm -hmm. to eighty or ninety, you know, do your multiplication by that. Right. But again, on that note, I think it's it's recommended that you go to eighty for most applications. But eighty we or do, ninety. But we do know somebody like Tesloop, who we mentioned before. Yeah, they do one hundred percent. They're doing one hundred percent all the time, and they've had no problems. So. You know, do it, do whatever you'd like, as mm -hmm. uh, long as it doesn't void the warranty, in my opinion. If it, if it still goes, go. And uh, one last question from uh, from Jake is: um, Do you think because of now the especially with the the new Apple announcement and wireless charging that they're starting oh, to push, is, is that going to come to the uh, more more to the SAX than the threes? I mean, I know you can get third party wireless charging today. Yeah. But do you think it'll be standard as? Uh, it's in not the standard. 
It's mm-hmm. not standard. Um, this is a question I've been answering on Twitter for the last few days, of course, since the announcement of the iPhones, mm-hmm. of course. Now, this is this is new to iPhones, not new to Android devices. I've had Androids where right. they could wirelessly charge. Uh, the standard is called QI or Qi. Yeah, Qi. Um, you can buy third-party little coils and Mm -hmm. uh, I'll put a link to a video description where um, Eric from Tesla Inventory did hack to his Model S to get that. Mm -hmm. Somebody else did it to a Model X as well. Um, So the the Model S, or the Model 3, I should say, sorry. The Model 3 at the front has a cubby that lifts up and it has uh, two uh, USB-A ports in there and you can buy the little pigtails, about that long, cost about $14, and you can get USB uh, Lightning, sorry, Mm-hmm. Uh, micro USB and USB C adapters uh, from app uh, from Apple <laughs> from Tesla. Sorry, um, and it allows you to blind holster two phones in that little rubber mm-hmm. pad area at the front. If you want to hack uh, the uh, the the unit, uh, and there's a schematic. If you go to the Tesla um, store website where you can buy those little adapters, they actually show you a little diagram um, as one of the secondary pictures. Kind of you know you got to click on it to look at it. Uh, but it shows you the process of how to install the little cable. Well, lo and behold, if you pull the little rubber mat off, there's a little bit of room under there, and you could probably take the door off yeah. and go inside and put the you little could. coils in. The coils are pretty cheap. I saw them on Amazon.com, yeah. and they're like six, seven, eight bucks. Yeah. They're pretty cheap. Mm-hmm. But you're going to have to hack your car. I don't know if it's going to mm-hmm. avoid the warranty and stuff. So, but for right now, it's 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 a hardwired connection. It's not wireless, but you can retrofit it if you so if you choose. Again. Another opportunity for somebody in the cottage industry to go. come up with some kind of you know device for something like that. And for wirelessly charging your car batteries and the main power batteries, there are some aftermarket, there are some companies that do do that today. It does they, exist. They, they provide a plate that bolts to the underneath your car and it lines up yeah. with something on your garage. But it's a slower charging yes. rate, and yes. so it's, it's done differently. It's slower than it's, level two, so, yeah. you know, so it's, it's convenient. Up, it's convenient because you drive up and go. Yeah. So there, that's available out there as well. You can Google for that. I forget the company. I used to be on their email list, but, mm-hmm. uh, but that's there too. So yeah. yeah. So in the future, maybe right now, there's most likely going to be third-party alternatives for that. Yeah. So thanks for the questions, Jake. And our last one is from Jerry. Um, Jerry's from Indianapolis, Indiana. Hope you're doing well, Jerry. And he's, uh, he's asking, any idea if the Model 3 will allow voice commands to be activated much like Siri on an iPhone? I would hope so. Hey, Tesla or something. (laughs) Uh, I would hope so. There's room for that. Right now, it doesn't exist on the S and the X. You can do the basic things like navigate to or um, call up a radio station, that kind of stuff. Like dial and phone and that kind of stuff. And I think Mm -hmm. I've told, I've said this before, of course, you know, there's legislation that's coming onto the books all the time, you know, hands free, you know, they don't want you touching your phone anymore. I can fully see a day when legislation will come down and says, that's it. No more buttons in the car. Everything has to be voice control. So... Having Gee, which assist- car doesn't have buttons in it? Mm, who's <laughs> well, thinking ahead on that one? Yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm just thinking <laughs> yeah. that uh, you know it, it is possible. It's just it's just a matter of priorities with Tesla whether mm-hmm. they want to implement something like that. They have you know like I said they're up to their necks right now and trying to get autopilot two up oh, to the man. level that they want to be. That's it. They're in production hell with the Model Three, so I don't Easy think guys. it's a priority on the list, but it's not impossible because over the air over the air updates and a software yep. controlled system. With enough money and time, nothing is impossible. Exactly. Remember that, folks. So yeah. whatever you're thinking, if you've got enough money to throw at it in time, it can get done. It, it would be right. really nice because we're seeing a lot of stuff in the Model 3 that's completely software controlled. There's no yeah. more buttons in the mm-hmm. vehicle other than what's required by law, and that's the hazard button. Everything mm-hmm. else is just you know contextual. Yeah. So right. yeah, I would fully expect to say, like in my Lincoln right now, I can actually talk to it and, and adjust the, the, the HVAC system. I can tell it the temperature I want, and it'll do it. So. I try talking to my car, but it doesn't I don't, do anything. So I, I don't use that function very often, crazy, but it exists, But that's another right? story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's it for our mailbag. So thanks, everybody, for writing in. Appreciate and, it. Thank uh, you. We appreciate that. Well, that's it for this show. Boy, it flew by. We had a lot of stuff to cover, but let's remind folks about the uh, Evanex or EV Annex. I like saying it one way. He likes saying it another way. <laughs> We're going to stick to that. You say Either tomato, way. I say tomato. That's right. Don't What's forget, that promo? Yeah. Don't forget about the book, folks. It's uh, called Getting Ready for Model 3 by Roger Pressman at Evanex. And uh, you can go to their website and order it. And if you use the code GR4M3, that's Get Ready for Model 3, and add the license plate frame to the order, it will discount the license plate uh, $10 so you get Mm -hmm. it for free. Just pay for shipping and handling. Really good book, about 140 pages. If you're not familiar with EVs in general, just want to find out more about Model 3, what you need to prepare, about the car in general, it's a really good book. And I highly recommend it. I read it several times now, so... And I think our friends down in Florida made it through the last uh, weather problems. I, uh, I spoke to the guys okay. and they yeah. said that, uh, yeah, things are, you know, they're they're without power a little mm-hmm. bit, but things are coming back yeah. online. So uh, good Again, luck. And our thoughts them. and prayers to everybody that's being uh, 
impacted by the storms and, and earth, recent earthquakes and everything going on. Oh, it's man. Just, um, Climate change for we, you. That's a whole other show. We won't get into oh. that. But if you're not, if something's not out of whack, then I'm not sure what else we can do to prove that something's going on. But anyway, thoughts and prayers out to everybody. Hope everything goes well. So how can people reach us? Well, folks, if you want to write into the show and give us uh, want Q&As to, please. for the mailbag, please yeah. reach us at m3ocshow at gmail.com. So feel free to write in. Mm-hmm. Uh, we really appreciate if you tell us where you're from so yeah. that people out there that are watching really know exactly uh, where you're from. We got a kick out of it too. Yeah, Seeing exactly. all these emails, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm very Twitter. active on Twitter. My handle is at Model3Owners and Ken is at Kenneth Bacor. I'm getting there. I'm getting more active. I'm slowly climbing the ladder. That's yep. good. <laughs> Uh, don't forget, check out our forum at model3ownersclub.com. We are fast approaching... Uh, 5,000? Uh, no, 10,000 members. Wow, 10,000 yeah, members yeah. already. Yeah, oh it's, my it's growing like crazy. That is growing like crazy. Yeah. Uh, we do have a Facebook page. Just go to Facebook and search for Model yep. 3 Owners Club, and you can uh, get on that list. And uh, lots of postings are happening there. Last but not least, don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please, that way yeah. you get instant notifications. Click the mm-hmm. little bell icon, too, so anytime we post a new video... You'll be first to be notified. And uh, don't forget, we have uh, our Patreon page, and we appreciate it. If you'd like to support the show, check out our Patreon page, and that's at patreon.com. That's P-R-T-A-E-R-O-N. No, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. There you go. .com. Uh, forward slash Model 3 Owners Club. Exactly. And last but not least, we have some really good swag. Yep. If you're into the Model 3. Obviously, all of our swag's in the laundry because we're not wearing <laughs> it today. We've worn it out for yeah. these events. Check out our shop. But and yeah. we've got quite a few things on there. The new duffel bag is really a hit. That, that it, looks it, cool. Yeah, it that fits in nice. the Model 3 front. It's awesome. So yeah, check nice. it out. Nice. You got caps. You got some nice jackets and stuff going on yeah, there. Yeah, I really appreciate it. People like them. So so excellent. Yeah. That's it for this episode. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. We will. Take care, everybody. Bye. See you later.